So it's been a while since I did the last video on the Super Nintendo Advanced PCBs. And since then I've made a new version of the Advanced Boards. Right here, this is version 4. The last video I make an EX High ROM game with the version 3 boards. And it's still mostly accurate, so you can still follow it for reference. There's just a few somewhat minor updates to this, to this board. So you might hear a lot of duplicate information from that video if you've already watched it. But I wanted to go over all the new features and all the changes and then also talk about how to make a multi-cart with these boards. So the, t the changes to this board, I have upgraded the board outline a bit to make it fit easier in a cartridge. Some of the, the clearances at the top were pretty tight. It still fit, but it was, it was annoying to put together. So I've trimmed that down a bit to make it easier. I've updated some of the silk screen to make it easier to read and it was already kind of self-explanatory, I think, but I think this makes it a little bit clearer. Um, and the big difference, I think the biggest difference are these added parts on this side. And those are to bring the design up to more accurately mimic an original Nintendo made board. If you've got the old version three boards, you don't have to worry about replacing them with these. They still work fine. You don't really have to worry about it. And this video will still apply to you mostly if you still have version 3 boards that you're using. But this is going to be the default version going forward, and I really hope I don't have to make a version 5. So, it's mostly just nitpicks at this point. So I don't expect to be updating it anymore. So, as I said, for this video I'm going to be making a multi-cart. And even if you're not making a multi-cart, you can still follow this video and I'll still go over the basic requirements for making a regular game, a regular single game. So you can still follow along and I'll note the differences as I go along about where you need things for multi-carts versus not. So for this one, I've got Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2. Um, I've already dumped these and I've already burned them to these two EPROMs, the 27C322s. And I've also already tested these games on a test board like this. So what I did was just take one of my advanced boards. This is actually a prototype one. Um, but you can take, you know, one of these and just put sockets on the ROMs, the RAM, and the CIC. This way you can test chips out before you solder them in. And it saved me a lot of headaches from programming a game incorrectly or something like that, or forgetting to program the CIC. And it prevents me from having to desolder any parts. So I can just test them on here if they work, take them out, and then solder them into the permanent board. So I recommend maybe looking into making one of those if you like to make a lot of games. So, One thing I do have to note is that using this test board, these sockets will push up you know, the chips higher so they won't fit into a regular cartridge shell. You have to either cut holes in it or just put it in bare. There's no real problem putting it in bare. You just gotta make sure you put it in the right orientation, which is why I've added notes here and here about which orientation you should put this board in the console. You basically want to put it in so all of the parts on the front, uh, the quote, front of the board, are actually facing the back of the console. So you put it in like this, if this was the front of the Super Nintendo. So if you put it in backwards, it won't break the game, but I have found that it will erase your save data. So if you have any, <laughs> if you have any cartridges you have save data on, don't put them in backwards. So with that out of the way, let's go over the requirements of these games. The important thing to remember about making multi-carts with this board is that you have to pick two games that match the same mapping type. So mo both of them must be either high ROM or low ROM, and you can't have one of each type. So I know ROM 1 and 2 here have sockets for high and low, so you would think maybe you could do a high ROM on the, on the bottom and a low ROM on the top, but you can't mix them. You have to choose two high ROMs or two low ROMs. And uh, for me, these Donkey Kong Country games, all Donkey Kong Country games are high ROM. So that's, that's good. Uh, the other important thing to remember is that you have to pick an SRAM chip that can contain, that can hold as much memory as your two games combined. So the two Donkey Kong Country games I have here use 16 kilobits of RAM. So that's 32 kilobits total. So I have picked the 62256 series SRAM chip and that holds 256 kilobits. Um, the only the only SRAM chips this board accepts for multi-carts are the 262256 and the 1008 series of SRAM. The 1008 is one megabit of data. Um, but whenever possible, I usually just suggest using a 62256 
because it has a lower save retention current than the 1008, so your saves will last longer. It's not terribly higher for the 1008. I mean, theoretically, you could still get at least a decade out of it if you pick the correct parts. But the good news is the 62256 will cover 99% of all games you would want to make anyway, and probably any combination of multi carts you would want to make. So I usually just stick to the 62256, but I do have the option there if you want to use the Megabit chip instead. It's also helpful, but not always required, to pick two games that have the same amount of SRAM for multi carts. Both of the Donkey Kong Country games, like I said, use 16, 16 kilobits of RAM. But you can usually get away with making two games with different amounts of SRAM. The reason I mention this is because some games will do a check um, to see how much RAM is available on the cartridge. And if they detect something more or less than what the original game was designed to use, it'll conclude that it's not on an original cartridge and give you an error message and say you can't play it. Uh, it just so happens that these Donkey Kong Country games will do this, so the way I get around this, I said I'm using a 256K SRAM chip, but on the back I have solder pads I'm going to talk about later that uh, basically configure the game to only be able to see a certain amount. So I have 16, 16K pads here, so we can make this so that the game only thinks it's getting 16K and get around that check. So, so most games that I have encountered won't do this, it's only certain games. Um, I think Kirby Dream Course will do it, and Earthbound does it. But if you want to make a game that has like 64K of SRAM, and then another one on the same multi-cart that doesn't use SRAM at all, you have to make sure that it can, it can still boot up with the extra SRAM there, but just pick the larger amount. So in that case, you use the 64K pads. So technically the game without SRAM will have 64K available to run, but it won't use it at all. As long as there's no check inside the code to see if it's legitimate, then it doesn't make a difference if you add available SRAM to it. So with all those details out of the way, I'm gonna go over all the parts that you need to use on this board, and also the solder pads that you'll have to configure. You can find all this detail on the website and a list of suitable parts that you can use. Um, you can even scan this QR code right here and it'll take you right to it. So I recommend checking that out. So let's start on the bottom left here. We'll go in order, starting with U2. U2 is the CIC. CIC is a regional lockout chip. The original one is 16 pins long, but there's code you can get online on my website. Um, I link to it. It's not my code, it's somebody else's code. But you can download it and then load it onto these CIC chips. Well, they're PIC 12 F629s and that will fake out the region lock so that you can play games without worrying about that. If you've got a clone console like a Retron or a Super Retro Trio, then it it shouldn't make a difference. So you don't have to worry about that if you're using a clone console or a console modded console that you've already got modded to ignore the region lockout chip. So the next parts are the ROM chips, U3 and U4. U3 is ROM 1, U4 is ROM 2. There are two rolls of holes here. You can pick the bottom set for low ROM games and the top set for high ROM games. And if you're only making a single game, you only need ROM 1. If you're making a multi-cart or EX high ROM game, you'll need ROM 2 as well. ROM 2 holds the second game in the multi-cart or the second half of the EX high ROM or EX low ROM game. So since I'm making a multi-cart, they're both high ROM games, I will be using the top sockets of ROM 1 and ROM 2. U5 is the SRAM chip I already talked about. Um, I'll be using the 62256 like I mentioned. It is 28 pins wide. There is a 32 pin socket here because the 1008 SRAM fits in the 32 pin socket. So you wanna make sure it's up against the edge like this. If your game doesn't use any SRAM, you don't need to worry about it. So U6 and U7 are multiplexers. I'm using 74 HCT257s. Uh, I have a list of other compatible parts on my website you can check out, but that's pretty standard. U9 is a decoder, it's right here, the 139 decoder. I'll be using a 74 HCT 139 for that. And these three chips, U6, 7, and 9, are required for every game you make, no matter if it's a multi-cart or a single game, or EX high ROM or EX low ROM. So you need those for everything. U8 is actually two sockets. There's one U8H and U8L, and one's for high ROM and one's for low ROM. You only populate one of them. 
and that's for accessing the SRAM as well. So if you're not making a game with SRAM, then you don't need this chip at all. The last chip is U10. It's a flip-flop, and that's only needed for multi-carts. So I will be using it for my build, but if you're not making a multi-cart, you don't need it. Um, I will note that if you put parts in here that you don't need, it's not going to make a difference. The game's not going to be broken or anything like that. It'll still run. You'll just be, you know, making the cart a little bit heavier um, and spending more money. So. so like on the test board, I have everything populated here, but I could make a game with this board that doesn't have any SRAM on it at all and uses, you know, a very small amount of space and it would still work. So, okay, so now let's talk about the discrete parts now that I've gone over all the ICs. So for everyone that I just went over, U2 through U10, you need a bypass capacitor. This is a 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor and you need one for every chip you used. So you need one for U2 right there and then there's sockets for all the other ones. So for every chip you have, you need a corresponding capacitor. And those are pretty cheap and easy to get. Then we have electrolytic capacitors, C1 and CB. C1 is needed for every game. CB is only needed if you have the SRAM chip. And I use 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. Uh, make sure the polarity is correct. I have written here which side's the positive side. So. That's usually the longer lead on one of these parts. So usually what I'll do for these, since they stick up, I'll put them in and then I'll bend them over. I'll solder them in first and then I'll bend them over like that. So that way it fits a little bit easier in the cartridge shell. And there's space on either side of these wings that you can bend them down into without any problems. Okay, so the capacitors out of the way, let's talk about the diodes and the resistors. You only need these parts if your game saves, if it has SRAM. So if you don't have an SRAM, you don't have to worry about the resistors or the diodes on this board. So each of the resistors have values called out next to them on the board. So that's easy to see. The diodes, I have a list of parts that you can use on my website. Check those out. You wanna generally try to pick low leakage current diodes. Um, that way your battery life will be uh, last longer just diodes like that. You can actually see how much current is being pulled from the battery when you have the game out of the console. If you take a multimeter that can measure millivolts accurately, and if you measure across R1, you should get a millivolt signal. It should be less than three, uh, two and a half to three millivolts. If it's anything more than that, your saves aren't gonna last very long. I've got more detail on how to figure out all of that on my website, so check that out. Um, finally, Q1 and Q2, these are transistors. I've specifically designed the board to work with 2N3904 transistors. So if you use something other than those, you might get some save glitchiness, or it might not even save at all. So you, you want to you wanna test that out if you're going to use something different. But the 2N3904 is a very standard part, so it's pretty easy to use, pretty cheap. The one thing you want to make sure about these parts, though, you wanna check the data sheet of wherever you get them from to make sure that the pins line up correctly. So you'll see on here, I have the pins marked C, B, and E. That's collector, base, and emitter. So you wanna make sure that the pins on here, even if they, even if it matches the shape on the silk screen, so you'll see like, if I put this in, the shapes match, but some of these 2N3904s will have a different order of pins. So you wanna make sure you get that correct. The other thing is I have all of these discrete parts on the back as well uh, called out. So if you want to put the parts on the back, you can. And usually what I do with these transistors, I'll put these on the back and then fold them down. I'll solder them in and then fold them down like this so they fit more flush with the board. That way it won't interfere with the shell as much. So you might have to do that. Lots of options. So one other thing I should note these three parts here, Q2, R6, and R7, those are only needed if you have a 1008 series SRAM chip. If you have the other two, the 6264 or 62256, you don't have to worry about populating these at all. So if you do put them in, it's not gonna make a difference. It's not gonna hurt the game at all, uh, like I said earlier, but if you don't have to put them in, why bother? And of course, the save battery, you'll need one of these. If you, uh, if you have any kind of SRAM on your board. So what I've done here, you'll see a lot of different holes. I've basically sized this to fit a lot of different tabbed batteries, 
and battery holders. I just went on DigiKey and looked up the you know the most popular ones for CR 2032s and made footprints for them. So you should be good for most battery holders, but I use pre-tapped batteries all the time anyway, because if you get good quality ones, you're not gonna have to change them out for over 10 years. So I don't feel like that really warrants a battery holder, but if you want one, you can have one. So one thing you do wanna watch out for though, sometimes these batteries you get, um, they won't be name brand, they'll just be generic. This one's actually just a generic one I got on eBay a while ago. The name brand ones are going to last you longer they're going to be what they're actually rated for. Their capacity is going to be what they're rated for. These ones, you won't know. I've seen reports of people getting ones that are completely dead when they when they come in the mail. Some of them will only have, you know, 50% of what they claim to have. So if you dump your games, your game saves a lot. You, you can probably get away with one of these. But might as well get a good quality one so it lasts longer. I, I need to order more. I only have these crappy ones that I got a long time ago. So it'll work for this video, though. So now that the parts are out of the way, I'm gonna go over all the solder pads on the board. On the top, there's only one set of pads. They're right here, marked U8 Bypass. If you have uh, SRAM, you need U8 in the board, like I said, but if you don't have SRAM, don't populate U8 and instead solder these two pads together. And I would not solder these pads together if you have one of these chips in, because your game probably won't work. On the back, there's a lot more solder pads. Hopefully they're self-explanatory, but I'm still gonna go over them. Um, ROM 1 and ROM 2, behind behind these sockets, we have these sets of three pads, and you choose one of them to solder together. If your game is high ROM, then you solder the high ROM pads, and you're using a 322 chip. Low ROM, you solder the low ROM 322 pads, and if you're using a 27C160, you just solder these two pads together, if it's high ROM or low ROM. And if you're not using the top one, if you're not using ROM 2, you don't have to worry about soldering these at all. Since I'm making a multi-cart in this video, I'm going to be soldering both of these high ROM. Over here, we have some more mode selection pads. And for these, these two-way pads, you want to solder the middle pad to the left or the right, or the top or bottom, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, for these ones, here's EX mode and normal. EX mode is for the EX low ROM and EX high ROM games. Normal is for everything else, so I'll be soldering the normal ones. And then right here is a multi-cart or the single game solder pads. Again, since I'm making multi-cart, I'll solder them to the multi-cart uh, setting. Over here is high ROM and low ROM pads. It's pretty self-explanatory. You don't need to solder these if you don't have SRAM. These are for specifically for games with SRAM, but you can solder them if you want to. Um, same for all these ones up here. These all have to do with the SRAM settings. So this first one here is SRAM enable. SRAM enable basically just connects power to the SRAM chip. So if you have a game that you want to erase the save on, but you don't want to take out the, the RAM chip, you can just desolder that and then resolder it to reset the save data. So it disconnects power to it. I'm going to skip over these and go to this one. Um, just another single game or multi-cart selection pads, and then more high ROM and low ROM pads. And now for this one, this is what tells the game how much SRAM it has available. So what you want to do is take the amount of SRAM you have and then solder the pads to match that. So for example, if you have 16K of uh, SRAM or you want the game to think it has 16K of SRAM, you solder all of these middle pads to the top because it's less than or equal to 16K here. And these, this, these K are kilobits, not kilobytes. Um, if you want something that has a megabit of RAM, then you solder them all to the bottom because one megabit is the max, and that's greater than 256K right there. So just pick the pads to set the game how you need it. And that's all of the solder pads. Okay, so now that I've talked about all that, it's time to actually assemble the cartridge. And uh, while I'm soldering, I'm going to put this capped on tape to protect the cartridge pins like this, to make sure you don't get any stray solder on it. Um, it's not, you know, not absolutely mandatory to do this, but better to be safe than sorry, right? So this will protect it from any stray solder that gets on there. You generally don't want to have any solder on the cartridge pins if you can help it. It kind of ruins the longevity of the cartridge. So, all right. So before you go soldering all the parts in, make sure they're in the correct orientation and pushed all the way into the board, especially the parts that stick up easily, like the NPN BJTs and aluminum electrolytic capacitors. 
You'll have to bend them down like I showed you earlier so that the board fits nicely in the shell. And before you fully solder everything in, it might be worthwhile to only solder one or two pins for each part and do a fit test before you fully solder everything in, just to make removal a bit easier if you need it. Also while you're soldering, you want to make sure you don't make any accidental short circuits by soldering two points together that should be separated. Once you finish soldering all the parts on, trim all the extra leads down so they don't touch anything else on the board. And then if you want, you can go back with some isopropyl alcohol and a q-tip to clean up all the residual flux that's on the board after soldering. Alright, so I finished soldering it and I took off the capped on tape on the bottom, so it's ready to go. There's just one thing I have to note um, that I forgot to talk about. I'll get a new board out for this. Um, at the top here, there's two extra little holes and it says for multi-carts, uh, bend one pin out and it tells you which SRAM chip for each hole. So since I'm using a 62256 chip, I'm bending the third pin down, which is actually the first pin of the SRAM chip. And I forgot to do that while I was soldering it together. I accidentally soldered it in the wrong hole. So I had to cut the pin and then just solder an extra little wire there. Um, not, not too hard to fix. And now I don't have a nice custom made cartridge label or anything like that yet for this multi-cart. So I'm just using an old Madden 96 shell that I had lying around. And uh, for this, for the old boards, um, you sometimes had a little bit of trouble fitting it in. Sometimes you'd have to clip these little ribs here to make the boards fit. But with the smaller profile, it should fit a lot better. And you'll see right here, you can see the, the cap bent off to the side here. And I've bent this one down like this, making sure that nothing's touching, none of the metal pins are touching anything else. So I'm put this back in. I don't have any screws right now. I don't feel like getting them out, so this will work. So let's test it out. All right, so I've got the game right here. I'm gonna use my Super Retro Trio to test it out. It's easier to record with this than it is my Super Nintendo, so. All right, so this is Donkey Kong Country. You can tell by the startup music. So that's good. Um, and then to change the game, you just gotta press the reset button and that'll switch it to the other ROM slot. Now you don't have control over which game starts up first. Either ROM slot one or ROM slot two could start up, um, at least with my boards, but not a big issue. All you gotta do is press the reset button to change the game, so. I'm going to play through a bit of this just to make sure that we've configured the RAM correctly. If, like I mentioned, for Donkey Kong Country games, if you don't give it 16K of SRAM, then it's not going to start up. It's not gonna let you play. It'll throw an error screen. So I think it would have already thrown a, thrown an error at this point, but let's just, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's working. So, all right. So if you run into any problems, like it won't start up correctly or something like that, just you know double check the board, make sure you don't have any short circuits Make sure you have the correct parts in, make sure you have all the solder pads soldered correctly, you know, stuff like that. Um, all of this, this, this whole guide and uh, example part numbers and troubleshooting tips are all on my website, so go check that out if you've run into any problems. But uh, hopefully this is a good overview of how to make games with this board, not just multi-carts, but you know, single games and EX high ROM, EX low ROM games. So hopefully this was helpful. Other than that, I think that's all I've got, so thanks for watching.